and welcome Trudy Webster and tell us about your role here at the museum. Um, so Dougal, I'm a, an assistant curator here in Natural Sciences, um, so I deal a lot with the collection, a lot with researchers that come in, um, we have to do our own research sometimes. Um, the Bugs exhibition for example, we just had to write a large chunk of that and a lot of research on insects and things which was pretty interesting. Yeah, well, it was obviously very interesting for the public because more than forty thousand people turned up. Yeah, yeah, it was it was well well attended. I think it was a it was a great exhibition. I, is that part of being part of the museum? Is the the thought that you are bringing people in? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you it's know, not it's just a matter of being sort of academic and looking at something and analysing it. No, no, definitely. Mm. Um, just getting it out there to the public is mm. sort of one of the one of the major aims of the museum, mm. really. So what have you got to show us today? Um, well, I've brought in some ambergris for you. Um, this is a, four samples from a collection that we've just acquired. Um, as you can see, it's quite, quite variable. There's oh. lots of different colours and textures. So it's sort of a, a solid substance and it's slightly waxy. Well, come on. I'm, I mean, we read about ambergris from time to time, yeah. how, how valuable it is. And yeah. People sort of fossick along the shore at the, at the top of the tide yeah. looking for it. But I mean, how would you know? And this looks like a piece of pumice. Yep, it does. I've got my white gloves on. Is it? That's all good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, it's quite a distinctive smell. So if you give it a smell, oh. it's sort of a sweet, earthy kind of smell to it. Hmm. I left. Yes, there's quite a bit of sea there too. I have to yeah, say. yeah. <laughs> but, well, that one is quite different to this one here. Yes. Oh, I just that one's pretty cool. So you know, people who search for ambergris. I and mean, if you stumble across it, how would you know, unless you were quite expert? Um, there are a couple of tests that you can do. Um, so there's, there's one that is a hot needle test. So if you heat <laughs> up a needle and you stick that into the ambergris, and if it melts with a sort of chocolatey... I can see all these people <laughs> along the top of the tide <laughs> under the sand, you know, wee fires heating yeah, up know, the needles. Yeah, I know, I know. But, but yeah, I mean, they, they all look so different that it's often quite difficult to tell. So they come from different different animals, but you better tell us what, really what it um, is, I haven't yes. asked you. No, mm. um, so it actually comes from sperm whales, so it's, it's secreted in the digestive system of sperm whales, um, and the thought is that hard parts inside their prey, like squid beaks, um, when they, they normally mm. vomit these up, but if they for some reason don't vomit them up and they end up passing through the stomach into the intestines, um, that this substance ambergris forms. Um, potentially it's to help it pass through or maybe mm. just because it's an irritant in their in their bowels and um, yeah so yeah. basically it then comes pass out it through, pass it through in their faces through, they oh they don't cough it up it? no no oh. so that's a common misconception yeah, yeah, um, so it's it normally comes out um, in their faeces mm. and if, if the bits are larger that, you know you, you don't think of whales and faeces for some no. odd reason <laughs> No, go. not so much. And this mm. bit, this bit here is particularly mm. interesting. She can actually see a, a squid beak just poking out of the side there. See that this, jagged, that tiny wee thing there, yeah, like, yeah. A, like a little canine tooth. Yeah. So that's well, um, well. so that's the upper beak of oh, a, poor little a squid. Fella. You went. I went right through a sperm whale. Yeah. <laughs> you should be a labour. <laughs> yeah. Right there. There you go. Well, yes, you can plainly see that. Yeah. Now, why is it so valuable? Why is it so sought after? Um, so it's used, it's still used in the perfume industry, it's used as a fixative, so a lot of the high-end perfumeries still use it, um, and all natural perfumes use it still. Um, historically it was used for a lot of different things. It was used um, during the time of the plague, people thought that it would ward off um, the plague if they carried it around with them. I'm not what, like, like a like a nosegay or something like that. Yeah, a little, yeah. A little bag or <laughs> a little yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure how you know. Yeah. Well, it's odd how these sort of superstitions grow around yeah, these things, yeah. but it is still used in the perfume industry. Yeah, no, it's definitely. And that still accounts for its value, presumably. Yes, yes. So, uh, well, you're quite lucky to have a collection like this. Yeah, yeah. So Otherwise we someone might have gone off to some ambergris bo broker and broke <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So we've got we've got a range of. Um, samples and it's really going to be a, a reference collection for us. We've so when you say reference that's so it's going to be in the museum but not necessarily on display? Um, we're hoping actually to put it on display um, potentially in the search centre. We, we only acquired most of it sort of in the last month or so. Um, 
so yeah we're hoping to put it on display we have lots of um, visitors that come in and have what they think is maybe ambergris mm. and want us to check it out so by having this collection we can you we can, you know, to, check yeah. it against that. You might have to have an ambergris identification desk. Yeah, we might have to. Charges more <laughs> yeah. Thank we you might very have much to. indeed. No problem. Yeah.